I don't know which what that's in reference to. Okay. Um, and this kind of falls in line with gamers, because we were just talking about gamers, obviously. <sighs> when are they going to learn? Where are they getting the money? And when are they going to learn? Um, you know, somebody brought this up the other day, and it actually kind of make po uh, makes a point or makes a makes a, a good assumption. Uh, headline, recent poll, 95% of gamers hate inclusivity and DEI. And you'll see I have Master Chief in the background there with a with a, a LinkedIn profile that's covered in rainbows. And and we've been asking ourselves for a long time now, why why are they still doing this? They're they're losing money hand over fist. You know, Disney is, Netflix is, st the Star Wars, the MCU, which granted is part of Disney. But these video games, all of them are losing money hand over fist. How, why are they still doing this? And then we, people will say, well, games take two to three years to develop, maybe more. And the tides of, of, of what's socially acceptable and, and what people like have changed. But I don't believe that because they're still doing the crap today. And I will show you that in a moment. Before we do any of the main stuff, we got to do send some love to today's sponsor, TWC.Health. Uh, they say the world feels like it's on edge right now. Tensions over the upcoming election, economic, economic instability, supply chain shortages, and health threats popping up left and right with talk of a new pandemic on the horizon. If you're waiting for the medical industrial complex to protect you and your family when things go sideways, you're making a huge mis mistake. You have to take action and be prepared. That's why I wanted to tell you about the wellness company's Contagion Emergency Kit. It's a lifesaver put together by real experts like Dr. Peter McCullough. Inside, you get medications like ivermectin, hydroxychloroquine, budenicide, and even a nebulizer. These are critical medications to treat respiratory illnesses and so much more, especially heading into flu season and hurricane season. If you can imagine when you, you or a loved one need life-saving medications, are you really going to risk being told no? Don't let anyone play gatekeeper with your health. Just a few clicks. That's right. Just a few clicks. That's the wrong button. Just a few clicks. There we go. Hey, look at me. I'm a professional, everybody. Just a few clicks and the kit is delivered right to your door. This is peace of mind for you and your family in uncertain times. I have my kit and now you can get yours by heading to twc.health forward slash odd man out and use code odd man out to get 30% off and free shipping. That's TWC health, uh, twc.health forward slash odd man out code odd man out for 30% off and free shipping. Don't wait for the next crisis to hit. Be ready, not reactive. Get your kit today and take control of your health. You know, they, they like me to read that as fast as their video, and I never can. I don't know if I just, I don't know if I, I speak slowly or if the video plays super quick. But I will tell you this much, guys. If you look at what's happened so far with the dock shortages that they went on strike, then you had the hurricanes come through, now Florida twice and five or six states getting nailed, and then you've got all the stuff coming with the elections. They're ramp I just saw an article yesterday where they're starting to ramp up COVID shots and all this crap again. Do yourself a favor. Just get a medical kit. It'll sit on the shelf there in case you need it. It's good for years. You know, this medication lasts forever. Get one, just be prepared, and then you're all set. They're still doing the crap today. Then somebody else brought up a good point. Ubisoft might be going on the market to be purchased by Tencent Media. Tencent Media is China and, of course, in bed with the Chinese government. Could it be that... These, these companies are somehow being tricked or foolishly going down the path of DEI and then ruining themselves and, and their stock plummets, and then they get scooped up by China. And it just becomes a way to buy out another American company. Now, I don't think China is playing 40 chess and like pushing that because we Americans are doing it to ourselves. So are the Europeans. But it could, could it be that one of the things they're going to do is let diversity take all of this down and then BlackRock and the other companies that are that own these, you know, 10% of these woke companies, could they then, once the stock goes way down, could they invest a lot of money and buy up bigger shares of Ubisoft and EA and whatever when the stock plummets, even though BlackRock has a majority share, so they can dictate what they do. These companies then listen, and then when the stock plummets, BlackRock then buys 20 or 30% of it, and then... China comes in and, and, and buys it up and the stock market returns and they make money off of this. There's all sorts of like theories going around, but something's got to be going on if they're not listening anymore. Uh, this is from Tech for, Tech for Gamers uh, from October 7th. Over 95% of players 
don't consider inclusivity important in gaming. Uh, they say forced inclusivity is an enemy of creativity. And this is by Abdullah Wasim. Now, I'm guessing Abdullah, uh, Abdullah Wasim, because of his name, is not, is not very big on inclusive and diversity. Hell, he's probably not even... He's probably not even in on women being in video games. They say inclusivity is an unfortunate trend that has picked up in the industry over the past few years. While having characters of different origins isn't anything bad, forcing a narrative is. Most fans share the opinion as 95% of gamers voted they don't care about inclusivity in gaming in a recent poll. Why it matters. Inclusivity has emerged as a proven culprit that ruins an entire game. We have had some clear examples in the last few years, including Concord, uh, the Suicide Squad, and more, and the backlash from the fans was quite apparent. Now, this doesn't have a massive sample size, but nonetheless, it was on uh, Neo a a GAF, where the poll was conducted. They say on a different poll on Twitter showed similar results, with nearly 10,000 votes, which is a very big sample size, a whopping 97% of social media users voted against the importance of, include, uh, of inclusivity. So they voted against it, saying it's not important, but it's not just there. And yeah, here's the, here's the post they have right here. It's not just that. It's that now gamers and people and movie go goers are getting so sensitive to this, this that if they, if they whiff, if they just get the lightest scent of diversity, they're out, they bail, they're done, they're gone. I'm one of them. I'm one of them. If I'm watching a game review and it seems kind of interesting and all of a sudden on a building or hanging from a street, like a flagpole somewhere, I see that flag, that rainbow flag. I'm like, uh oh, hold on. Let me look into this a little bit more. Let me look at if is Sweet Baby Inc. involved. Who's the studio? Who are the producers? Who are the people involved with this? Because you're not, I'm not spending my money on that crap. I don't want the message. Uh, they say, for context, Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League introduced Mrs. Freeze in its latest season. The character has a huge history in comics, movies, and TV shows, and has always been Victor, uh, Fre Victor Fries or Mr. Freeze. The idea of changing that attracted a lot of criticism because they took a man who had an amazing backstory and why he wanted to, why he became Mr. Freeze. There was, I mean, it's in the comic books. It's a huge backstory. And they're just like, eh, and he did it for his wife. He wanted to save his wife. And, and then for, for the Kill the Justice League stuff, they said, eh, we're just going to make it a woman. Who cares? Okay, you just destroyed the whole, the whole evolution of the character and why he existed. They say forced inclusivity was never a problem a few years ago, ever since consultation companies like Sweet Baby Inc. emerged. This unfortunate trend has been forced into the industry, ruining many great games. Sweet Baby Inc. has a bunch of notable names working with it, including uh, Santa Monica, X -Bank, X Xbox Game Studios, Warner Brothers, Ubisoft, and more. The influence is quite visible in their recent titles as well. Square Enix should be appreciated for being pulled out of the list. One of Sweet Baby Inc.'s employees even admitted that the company's goal is to burn the industry to the ground, indicating a massive threat to the gaming industry. And, and I did a video on that. Well, where, where does this come from? Because this came out yesterday. When are they going to learn? And what's funny, at this point in time, people aren't even mad about it anymore. At first, people were really getting angry. If you if you guys watch Heels versus Babyface, he did a rant for like three minutes about pronouns and pronouns going in games, and it went viral. Bethesda, there is nothing I love more than to 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 sit down, comfy chair turn on my PC, fire up a brand new RPG, uh, uh, lose myself, think, oh my God, just think of this world, just think of all the planets I can visit. Then with all of that laid out in front of me, I love nothing more than to be dragged out at every fucking conceivable opportunity so you can fucking current day us. Sorry, did you want to get immersed in our world? Yeah, well, guess what? Fucking pronouns. And he was, he was really upset. It was over... Starfield, I think it was. Um, he, he was really pissed off. I think that's Bethesda Studios, if I remember right. And he, he just went on this epic rant. It got shared all over YouTube and Twitter and because he was just frustrated. And now if you watch his videos when he sees this stuff, he's laughing. 
We've reached the point to where we're numb of your product. We're numb to your product. We're numb to what you're doing. If, if there's just a hint, we're walking away. And wokeness says this is who Microsoft just chose to put in charge of their Halo franchise. This is going to be who's in charge of Master Chief. Now, I have a zoomed in image so we can read it. Now, if I'm to be honest, the picture of this quote unquote woman kind of looks like. This time we are sure she's a woman, right? It kind of looks like a dude a little bit. It, 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 the shoulders, the, the, the very square, it kind of looks like a dude that now is a Melissa. Pronouns, she, her. I don't know. I don't even care anymore. <laughs> I think the fact that I'm even looking at this and wondering tells you how much trouble you're in. Melissa Boone, chief of staff of 343 Industries, hiring a, a business administrator, Halo Studios, Redmond, Washington, United States. It says, hi, currently I'm the chief of staff at Halo Studios, the stewards of the Halo franchise. My role is to ensure the smooth running of our studio. It includes a little bit of everything. I'm a problem solver, a process builder, a strategic thinker, an executor, an, an integrator, a communicator, and an advisor. Okay, that's a whole lot of nothing. Basically, this is the best job ever for someone with a lot of interest who like to stay busy and possess a healthy passion for military science fiction games and lore. Okay. 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 So there's Halo, Chief. There, there's your next director of the Halo game. That's dead. And then from Star Wars Holocron, which is a like a fan account for Star Wars, it's got 215,000 followers. They said Secrets of the Clone Troopers includes a first look at Sisters, a transitioning woman clone trooper. What the hell is even that? <laughs> so... You take a you take a clone trooper, you take you, you, you take, oh Jesus, you take Boba Fett, you take Boba Fett. Wait, who's who's uh, Jango Fett? Was it? Uh, I'm I'm now now I'm not a Star Wars, I'm not a Star Wars person. I've watched the movies. I paid attention. It it was. Let me think. It was Jango Fett that they took the clones from. Right, Jango Fett made the clone army. If I'm re remembering correctly was Jango Fett. And so all the stormtroopers were clones of him. Yeah, Jango. But so so now one of them just decides to be her? I feel like a woman. I feel like a woman. Eh, eh, na, 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 eh, eh. What is going on? <sighs> Rex's description of sister in the books reads, when one of our kind expressed her gender identity differently than her fellow troopers, she figured... No, oh, no, she featured, she'd have to hide who she truly was inside. Fortunately, her brothers in the Seventh Sky Corps gave her, her the name Sister as a constant reminder that she belonged. Doesn't anyone notice this? I feel like I'm taking crazy pills! What the actual... F f fuck. So, be, so not... Oh, not only, <laughs> I'm, I'm weeping tears of stupidity right now. I don't even, so not only did all the other clones were fine with him not being a clone anymore, but him growing hair, him identifying as a woman, and him painting pink and blue stripes on his armor. <laughs> Gee. Gee, why is Star Wars dead? Gee, what could be going on? Star Wars unveils first trans stormtrooper sister, and fans are divided. Fans are divided, everybody. Let me, let me, now let me, I'm just, spoiler alert, spoiler alert. Here's the fan division. 97% of people say, Holy Jesus. What the f and the other uh, three percent say, "I don't like the looks of this vagina." That's right. That's right. I'm using every button I have to describe the madness. <laughs> 
every button I have to describe the madness. So 3% are on board, 97% aren't. And they're like, well, it's split, everybody. It's split. This is from today, two hours ago, three hours ago. A new character in the Star Wars universe is causing quite a stir with the fans of the franchise. The first transitioning stormtrooper named Sister appears in the new book, Star Wars, The Secrets of the Clone Troopers. You know what's funny? People used to watch the movies, and they the first three movies were canon. Were canon. And then the next three were, some people say, well, we can count them as canon. Others say, no, go to the books. The book series is canon, and they're making the movies off of that, and they're screwing around, and... It's that, and the movies can't really be considered. And then when it comes to Palpatine and and coming back and uh, uh, Kylo Ren and 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 the and the Mary Sue and all that stuff, they said that is definitely not canon. What are you going to do when the book series starts including transitioning troopers? Now nothing is canon anymore. It's you're they're literally destroying the entire franchise and every little thing that someone says at least i can at least i got the original movies at least i got the books at least I, no no they're rewriting all of it all of it even the book series so now it's going to be books before this period are canon and movies before this period are canon and everything else is absolute dog shit and when it becomes too confusing people are just gonna be like i'm out i'm out According to the X account, Star Wars Holocron, the character Captain Rex gives a description of sister in the book that says, when one of our kind expressed her gender identity differently than her fellow troopers, she featured, she'd have to hide who she really was inside. Why would you have to hide who you are inside? You're in fucking armor. You're all clones. You all look the same. You're all in fucking armor. Why would you have to Show who you are on the outside. You're ar you're in armor. Oh my god! It, you're clones. Fortunately, her brothers in the Seventh Sky Corps gave her the name Sister as constant reminder she belonged. Sister made her Star Wars canon debut. There it is. See, they're trying to replace canon. They're trying to replace canon. They. It's not about money anymore. It's you will drink the Kool Aid. Or you lose. You you can't think about this anymore. You can't enjoy it. And I'll be honest with you. I can go back and watch the first six movies. The first three are great. The second three, I didn't like them that much because I thought the acting was flat. But now their Oscar winning performances compared to the last three. And and now they're doing now they're calling this canon. They're calling this canon. I told you. I didn't even read through this story before this because I found this about five minutes before starting, starting my recording. She served the Galactic Republic alongside... Oh, she was alongside Anakin Walker. Oh, she was alongside Anakin and Obi-Wan during the Clone Wars. Characters not yet appeared in any Star Wars or TV shows or movie. Wait, so where was she in all the other previous books? Where he... Where was he in all the previous other books? Where was he and all the other stuff? Now, just miraculously, in 2022, Queen's Hope, here he is. Oh, and he happens to be alongside two of the most popular characters, Anakin Skywalker, a.k.a. Darth Vader, and Obi-Wan. He was here the whole time. You just didn't notice his blue and pink and white armor. You just didn't notice it before. Go back and watch the movies. I, I, oh, my gosh. I would be, please, just do this. Please Please, Star Wars, just do this. Insert this thing into the first three movies. In one of the scenes, digitally alter one of the stormtroopers to have pink and blue stripes on it to make it part of the can. Just please do that. Please do that. So then anybody, anybody who's not paying attention and goes and says, I want to stream or watch my favorite classic Star Wars, and all of a sudden... They see some blue and pink stripes on one of them that's been retconned into the movie. Please do this. Please. Please, I'm begging you. Because at this point in time, the, the way that they're, the way that they do this and the way that they destroy this is more interesting than anything they're making. Laughing at the downfall of these franchises and watching the money just being hemorrhaged 
from these companies and trying to make this a thing is chef's kiss. It is an act of beauty. Because when we go back and look at these polls, where 95 and or 97% of gamers, which includes video games, but it also includes nerd stuff, geek stuff, like comic books, like video games, like movies, like uh, the book series, all this stuff. They're, they're giving you their answer. And their answer is to suck it. And they refuse to learn. They refuse to learn. Please do this. Just for our entertainment. At, at one point, we wanted to save the franchises. Now, please, please go, go so over the top that we can continue to have our laughs and enjoy your descent into irrelevancy. But what I do enjoy is watching them trying to tell men what masculinity is. I like, I like when they try to tell men what the definition of masculinity is or where they tell us this is the definition of a good man or an accepting man or this, you know, finding somebody like this acceptable and wonderful and amazing, embracing the culture and, and supporting their, this madness. I love when they say that if we don't do that, that we're toxic, we're not masculine. Real masculinity understands biology and the rule of nature and the rule of law. And this degeneracy isn't it. Real masculinity pushes back against this degeneracy. And we, we will make fun of it. And it's not fear. It's not a phobia. It's understanding that they've gone crazy. And because we won't get sucked into their crazy, they hate us for that. They hate us because we can't be controlled and, and they can't tell us what to do. And that drives them nuts. And I'm, I'm here for that. That's what I think is masculinity. <laughs> Thank you.